here in Luke chapter 8, and begin reading in verse 26. And they arrived at the country of the Gadarenes, which is over against Galilee. And when he went forth to the land, there met him out of the city a certain man which had devils a long time, and wear no clothes, but neither a gold in any house but in the tombs. And when he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him, and with a loud voice said, What have I to do with thee? Jesus, thou Son of God, most high, I beseech thee, torment me not. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man, for oftentimes it had caught him, and he was kept bound with chains and in fetters, and he broke the bands and was driven of the devil into the wilderness. And Jesus asked him, saying, What is thy name? And he said, Legion, because many devils were entered into him. And they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep. And there was there a herd of many swine feeding on the mountain. And they besought him that he would suffer them to enter into them. And he suffered them. Then went out the devils, or the devils out of the man and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the lake and were choked. And when they fed them, that fed them, saw what was done, they fled and went and told it in the city and in the country. Then they went out to see what was done and came to Jesus and found the man out of whom the devils were departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. They also which saw it, told them by what means he had, that were possessed of devils was healed. And so notice what it says again. It says, they came and they saw him sitting at the feet of Jesus. And folks, I can't think of a better place to be than to be at the feet of Jesus. And there's so many times that we're in trouble and other things that happen to us because we haven't taken time to sit at Jesus' feet. And so I trust as we get into our message that will be a blessing to you, encouragement. And so right now we're going to ask God's blessing upon our, our services. And uh, I'm going to ask Brother Chuck Swanson. Brother Chuck Swanson, would you pray for us, please? Heavenly Father, we come to you once again to learn your word, Lord. And pass the other pray that you'd be a pastor as he brings a message you speak through him tonight, Lord. And that we'll uh, pay careful attention, Lord, and learn what he's trying to teach us, Lord, and that we can take it to others. And we just thank you for all that you do for us. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen. As we look at the scriptures, many times we see people that look to Jesus and you'll find him sitting at his feet. And again, there's so many things that we can learn and we want to just point out a few incidents in the scriptures that I trust might help us. And uh, we'll come back to this, this particular passage in just a moment. But it is a place of pardon. And Luke chapter 7 verse 38 says this, And stood at his feet, behind him weeping, and began to wash his feet with tears. And then wiped them with the hairs of her head, and kissed his feet, and anointed them with ointment. Again, this is referred to a woman that simply was classified as a sinner. And so we find that she went to Jesus because she knew that Jesus could pardon her of all her sins, and of all her failures, and of all her shortcomings. And not only that, but that Jesus really wanted to take care of her life, and to pardon her. And so many times I pray we go to people, and say, oh, Somebody else got a car problem, it's a mechanic. Someone else that might say, as a doctor, might say, oh, no sick person. And uh, you wonder if doctors ever get sick of seeing sick people, you know? But anyhow, and so there's so many times that things happen. We go to certain people for certain needs. But I want you to know that Jesus looked forward to and wanted to be a blessing to those that came to him. And he would do everything he could to bless them. It's just a matter of humbling ourselves and going to him. And so this woman, a sinner, it says, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, she brought an alabaster box of ointment and stood at his feet behind him weeping and began to wash his feet with tears. And folks, she had come to a place where she had realized the awfulness of her sin. She realized how awful the things were that she had committed. And she realized that she had transgressed the laws of God and of man. And as a result, she came to herself and said, what can I do with this? I feel so guilty. My conscience just 
it, it just bothers me all the time. I, I can't get a good night's sleep. I, I can't think right. I, I, I need help. I've got an addiction. And i got to find help about something. And she heard about Jesus. And of all things, she heard that Jesus was in her neighborhood. And that he was at the house of a Pharisee, a religious person. And so she went. And when she went, what an interesting story. She just began to weep, realizing that her hope, if you please, of salvation was in this man. And it says simply that as she stood at his feet behind him, weeping, and she began washing his feet with her tears and with her hair. And again, the hair is often referred to in the scriptures as the glory of a woman. And so she took her glory to please and did what she could uh, concerning Jesus' feet letting him know just how sorrowful she was for her sins. And I love what Jesus said to her in verse seven, uh, 47. He simply said this, thy sins are forgiven. And, and folks, isn't it great that no matter how far we have strayed from God or how far we were before we found him, uh, he is always ready to forgive us. But what a wonderful God. I, we, we fail to realize just how exciting it is that our God is a God of forgiveness and that he can forgive any sin that has ever happened in your life. And not only that, he wants to, but he will not force himself upon anyone. It's a matter of us making that decision. Yes, Lord, I have sinned and I want to be forgiven. We have to come to that place because he will not just, you know, just say, okay, everybody just forgive me. You have to be willing to be forgiven. I hate to say it, but I'm afraid many people just don't want to be forgiven. Many people want to continue in their sin and just doing what they can to, to enjoy life uh, from their aspect. And again, folks, it is sad that there is pleasure in sin for a season and that people will spend time in that sin instead of going to God and making things right. Because, folks, you may there's pleasure in heaven forever. <laughs> And that's the difference that we're looking at with just a few fleeting moments of some terrible sin that we've allowed to come into our life and to have control over us over having forgiveness of all sins for all eternity. So we see it was a place of pardon at the feet of Jesus. And I wonder, because of what Christ did for us on the cross, and as we picture him being hung on that cross and his feet, if you please, at a very a touchable place there on the cross, uh, how many? have been touched by what Christ did at his feet, so to speak. They trusted him. So it's also a place of learning. And folks, I've learned this, and I trust you have too, that the more I learn about Jesus, the easier it is to love him. The more I, I learn about him, the more I want to learn about him. And, and it's exciting that he is so accessible that we can go to him and that we can learn more and more about him on a daily basis. We find in the scriptures another story, Luke chapter 10. And as we look, look at Luke chapter 10, we're introduced to a woman named Mary, another woman named Martha. And as we look at them here, notice what it says. As we begin uh, looking here in verse 39 of uh, chapter 10 of Luke. It says this. It says, And she had a sister called Mary, this is referring to Martha, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his words. And so, folks, it's important for us to take time to sit and to think upon Jesus, to take and study the Word of God. And Jesus is referred to as the Word itself. And so as we look at God's Word again, it helps us to see our own self. It's like looking into a reflection of a mirror. And as we read God's Word, it can show us things that we need to get right in our life. And it can show us how we can have a better relationship with Jesus. And not only that, it shows us how we can look more like Jesus. Uh, you ever seen kids do dress up? And uh, I, I can remember our kids going through some dress up scenes and so forth. And uh, anyhow, some were quite funny. And uh, I won't tell you a story about me, but I'm okay about the old lady. But anyhow, uh, but it's amazing <laughs> some of the things that people can do and how they can fool others. And, and, and what's exciting is sometimes you see those kids as they're playing mama and daddy. And uh, it's exciting as they put on. Uh, mommy's clothes and put on daddy's clothes and stuff. Of course, they don't fit them at all because they're so little. And uh, But they want to be like daddy. And they want to be like mom. And they, and they want to have a marriage like mommy and daddy has. And they just look at that. And it, it's something that they, they strive for. They hope that they can have that. 
And so the same thing what I'm saying is that should be the desire of every one of us. I want to be more like Jesus. I, I want to look more like Jesus. I want to act more like Jesus. I want to love like Jesus loved. And so all these things are things that we can learn. And we find here that Mary was sitting at his feet. She was listening to what the Lord had said. But it says, verse 40, But Martha was covered about with much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister had left to serve me, to let me serve alone? Bid her, therefore, that she help me. And so it is amazing when we sit at the feet of Jesus. <laughs> How many people go, wow. Man, he's talking to Jesus. Why? He spent time in the Word. Isn't that amazing? Instead, they look at us and go, you lazy bum. You need to be out here doing this and doing that and everything else. But listen to Jesus' answer to her. He said, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. And folks, how many times we get so troubled or so bothered about what's happening in our life, about what's happening in this world, what's happening to our loved ones, and simply, and we, we should listen as we hear Martha, Martha, that we should apply our name and say, you know, Jerry, Jerry, or Richard, Richard, or Charles, or whoever we might be. Thou art careful and troubled about many things. Folks, one of the easiest things for me is to get distracted, sidetracked. You ever had to have tea? And sometimes you get the best intentions, and many times at the end of a message, I thought, well, you know, I really need to work on this, I need to work on that, and I'm going to, you know, be a better witness to speak, I'm going to spend more time in prayer, I'm going to spend more time reading scriptures. And about uh, Monday, uh, well, this happens and that happens, and I can make all these excuses, but you can too, and you do. And then by the time the Monday's over, I go, whoa, I was going to do this, and I was going to do that. What happened? Folks, I guess somebody would say, well, life happened. But we need to set up and, and strive to say, I want to sit at his feet. Now, now think about it. How many people today, maybe they had the intentions when they got up today, I'm going to go to church. I don't care what's happening. I don't care if it's snowing. I don't care if it's icing. I don't care if my car don't start. I don't care what's going on. I'm going to go to church. And next thing you know, uh, well, you know, uh, this has happened. I, hadn't, I, I wasn't planning on that, you know. And they don't come. They don't make it to church. And maybe they had every intention of being here, but something happened and they did not make it. Uh, over and over again, we have people that we visit and they tell us, and uh, Richard can identify some of his people because he knows exactly what I'm talking about because he's had the same experience with the same people. And they said, well, we'll be there Sunday. We'll be there Sunday. And Sunday comes and they're not here. And then we talked, well, when we got up, one of the kids wasn't feeling good and and we had a flat tar on the, the car we don't use very often, but we had flat tar on it. And, and, and they'll start, you know, just and send us some excuses. They really do some kind of silly, you know? And, uh, and, and again, there are times that it is more serious. So, folks, if you're going to come to church, you ready? You need to come to church. It's just as simple as that. If, if you're going to work your job, guess what? You need to go and work your job. You need to go to your job site and get there and do your job. And, and if you're going to go visit a friend, then you need to go visit that friend and not just talk about what you're going to do, but do it. But folks, that puts the devil on the run when we do what we know God wants us to do. And so, again, Mary, as she was sitting there, Jesus said, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. And how many people are at church today because they were just worried about what might happen? But one thing is needful, and Mary had chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. And so Jesus, even though her sister, you know, Mary's sister Martha had said, Lord, make her do right. She's not doing the right thing. And how many times may we give you that same thing? We make a judgment. Well, they're not doing right. They need to, you know. But Jesus said she's chosen the better thing because she chose to come and sit at my feet to learn more about me. You see, Jesus knew that his days were definitely numbered. And that he was fixing to step out. And if you please, the, the, the go to the cross. And so Mary was doing all she could just to soak up as much as she could about Jesus. And as much as she could from him while he was there. Because she knew the day was coming that he would no longer be there physically. And so she wanted to gain all she could. And so folks, we need to take advantage of the times that God has given us. 
and uh, of the people that God has placed in our life. We, we need to take advantage of them and learn from them. We need to take advantage of the teaching opportunities. I, I appreciate our Faith Bible Institute, the fact that we go through the Bible every three years, verse by verse. That's fantastic. And that we cover all the major doctrines every three years. That's exciting. And, and it's amazing how every time we watch it, we've got several of here that have done it a number of times. Uh, and, and every time you see it, it's new and it's fresh, even though we've heard it before, but there's been things that have been added and supplemented to it. And, and it just seems like it hits exactly what we're going through at that time, that God truly has an answer from his word to help us through all the problems that we face. But too often we run around like a chicken with his head shot, so to speak. You ever seen that? Have you ever seen that? Uh, my my step-grandma, boy, she was just unbelievable when I came to get the chickens and get them ready for dinner. She just walked out there and grabbed by the neck. And her big thing was taking two at a time. You, know, you see them running off, but their hand wasn't there no longer. She had the hands in her mouth, and you see just throw them on the ground. The other chickens come start eating that head. <laughs> they were getting ahead of all the other chickens. But anyhow, uh, any of y'all ever seen that before? Okay. Uh, uh, quite an experience. Okay. But simply, uh, they're running around. They can't see where they're going, but they're definitely running around. And what I'm saying, aren't we guilty of that so many times? Because we don't take time to be with Jesus and let him give us the direction that he wants to give us and then to commend us for doing that, which is right. It's also a place of prayer. When we find ourselves at the feet of Jesus, it's amazing all the things that he wants to do for us. And again, as we read in the scriptures, I'm just going to refer to them. But in Mark chapter 5, verse 22 and 23, we see that Jairus was a ruler of the synagogue. And when he saw Jesus, it says that he fell at his feet and he besought him greatly. He said, my daughter is at the point of death and I need your help. You're the only one that can help her. She's going to die. And so as he played with Jesus, Jesus answered the prayer. But, but simply as he answered the man's prayer, there were some other things that happened, some other things in which a woman with the issue of blood I came and touched Jesus and was healed of her issue. And just one thing after another that happened before he finally got there. But folks, that man knew that if he could talk to Jesus, that religious man, please, Jairus knew if he could just touch Jesus, if he could just get in touch with him, that Jesus could make everything right with his daughter. And folks, I don't know what things you might be dealing with. Maybe you have a problem with somebody at work. Maybe you have a problem with somebody in your neighborhood. Maybe you have a problem with somebody in your family. Maybe you have somebody that, uh, uh, maybe you bought a car or something and, and had problems with that car. And I can just go on and list all the things that we might be dealing with. But we can go to the Lord in prayer. And he can take care of every one of those problems. And he wants to help us with those problems. And again, in a very real sense, our problems become the problems of Jesus. And so when this man saw Jesus, he ran to his feet. We find it was a place, not only was it a place of prayer, but I love this part. It was a place of answer. Jesus can't answer our prayers till we pray. Do you know? And so again, we have to ask, and the Lord wants to answer our prayers. And so Jesus healed Jairus' 12 year old daughter in verses 41 through 42 here in Luke chapter 5. And uh, what a blessing when we see how. Jesus could intervene on behalf of our loved ones. Uh, but again, it's important that we pray and that we expect God to do something as we pray. And again, he wants to, and he will, if we'll let him. So here again, as we, we look to see what the Lord did for him and how that answered his concerns. So what a blessing that we can always go to the Lord and have him take care of whatever needs we may face in our life. And just as Jairus had his uh, daughter healed, uh, we can also experience the same way to see that you are. Uh, we were talking earlier tonight about uh, the massive car pile up there in Fort Worth, Texas. And we were talking about accidents. And we got to talk about how many times we should have had an accident, but we didn't because of God's intervention. And how many times has God spared us from a sickness or whatever it might have been in God's intervention? And so again, a lot of times, I'll put it this way, the intervention, we look and go, wow, God, that could have been a terrible wreck. Wow, I could have got killed. Wow, and we look at all these things that could have happened. And yet, because there had been prayer, it didn't happen. And folks, it's so important for us to pray so that God can do his work in our lives. So as we look on again, in Luke chapter 17, verse 16, there's a 
sad, but exciting story that Jesus came in, if you please, in contact with 10 lepers. As he saw these lepers, and they began their scene of crying out unclean, as they would cover their face and let them know that they were lepers, Jesus healed the ten of them. And uh, he talked about excitement as these people realized they were healed, and they ran off to see the priest so they could be pronounced clean of leprosy. And as they began running, one came back to Jesus. That one that came back to Jesus, simply it says he fell at his feet. When he fell at his feet, it says very clearly, he fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. Verse 16. He was sort of a half-breed of the Jewish and Assyrian races. But he was the only one that came back. He was considered a stranger to the, the Jewish uh, economy, if you please. And so of all things, when he realized he was healed as he was being obedient to Jesus, he immediately turned back and went to Jesus and thanked him for healing. There was 10 healed, but only one came back to thank him for what he'd done. And folks, how many times we need to find ourselves at least falling at the feet of Jesus and saying, Lord, Thank you for what you did today. Thank you, Lord, for your intervention. Thank you, Lord, for taking care of my love. And thank you, Lord. We need to go to him on a regular basis and just let him know how much we really appreciate what he's done. And yet we just, uh, so many times, just take him for granted. Wow. Imagine how those men that were due with that terrible disease, the leprosy. And as they listened to Jesus and followed this commandment, they went to see the priest to be plain clean to no longer have leprosy. And as their bodies were healed, they failed to return to thank Jesus and they go see the priest. So many times we kind of jump ahead on that. Sometimes we, we just take thanks for granted. Folks, God likes to be thanked and we need to thank him. And you know, I don't think we give everything God too much for the things he does for us. And for the things that uh, may not be that evident to us that he's not. So again, I'm so thankful for his intervention. But the only one who thanked our Lord again was a stranger, a despised Samaritan. And, uh, and it's sad that this is more typical and how tragic it is that so few thank God for all the wonderful things he's done for them. I, I don't know about you, but I catch myself quite often saying, Lord, thank you that I was born in America. Thank you that uh, I live here in Rochester, Indiana. Thank you for my church. Thank you for the people of our church. Thank you for my family. Folks, God has truly been good to every one of us, and we can never thank him too much. And then when I think of the feet of Jesus, in Luke chapter 8, verse 35, that's where we were in the beginning of our message, we see a man that was demon for death, a man who lived in the tombs. As I think of this man, it reminds me of so many shows and movies and series that they got about the walking dead, you know, uh, about the zombie-like uh, epidemic that's hit New York or whatever it might be, and uh, all these fictitious things going on, and that, that's the end of the world. These people get this terrible thing, and they lose their mind, and they start eating each other, whatever. And yet, as I look at this man, he was very much in that situation. Of all things, he was living in a graveyard. He was living in the tombs. And I don't know what all his involvement was within the tombs. I, I don't know if he was doing things to desecrate the bodies that were there or whatever, but he was not doing right. He was someone that uh, you did not want to meet. I don't care if it was broad daylight or nighttime. You did not want to meet this guy. You didn't want to be around him. And folks, I can't help but think that he probably smelled like death. He was a man that probably never, ever bathed, and yet he lived in the graves. You think how frightening, and I, I can't help but think about his family and his loved ones. And what was their reaction toward this man that was maybe their father, this man that was a husband, this man that was a brother? What was their reaction? How did they react when people said, well, I saw your brother. <laughs> and you should see he was climbing up on top of this gravestone, and then he jumped off of it. And man, they were having a funeral service out there, and he just came and disrupted, and everybody ran for their lives. And... and you realize he had relatives. And how embarrassing it would be. And 
and maybe the children, maybe if you please, various other children say, your dad's a lunatic, your dad's a devil. And it's amazing how mean children can be. Uh, excuse me. And it's amazing how mean people can be in general. And you know what? This man didn't want to be in this situation. But he was in a place where he couldn't rest. He couldn't get a full night's sleep. Uh, you, you know, you've heard of people that have dual personalities. You know, uh, you've heard of people that may have multiple personalities. But according to his testimony, as he was talking to Jesus, which Jesus did not deny what he said, but he apparently had well over a thousand demons in him. And the fact that 2,000 demons were outside would indicate that there was 2,000 demons in him. Boy, I have a hard time just talking to myself. See what I mean? But can you imagine having all these conversations happening within your heart, within your mind, as all these things are saying, well, let me do this, let me do it. Oh, look at it. What a frightening life that would have to be to have all these things going on within his life. But then he saw Jesus. And the demons, they recognized Jesus. They knew him from the beginning of, of the creation of, of the demons, if you please, of the ones that became the fallen angels. They knew who Jesus was, and his physical body couldn't cover up who he was. And they went to Jesus. And uh, as they fell before Jesus, and folks, Satan will fall at the feet of Jesus. And they, he will acknowledge that Jesus is God and that Jesus is the creator. And all these things will be confessions made from Satan to Jesus. Again, as they looked at this man, <laughs> they, they found that he was no longer under the influence of the demons that he plays. But he was in his right mind. Uh, wow. We could use some healing like that today, couldn't we? I mean, there's some people, you know, and I'm not just talking about politicians, okay? Uh, but there's some people that their minds are really messed up. Their minds are really twisted up. And folks, are you ready? Just as in the day of Jesus 2,000 years ago, people were influenced by demons. That's still happening today. It never stopped. And there's people that are so giving themselves over to the devil, if you please, and over to the world, to the world system, that they do things that in their mind, it's right what they're doing. And I don't care how awful it is, it's right to them. That Jesus can come into a person's life. As it says here, he was in his right mind. I wonder how many people that maybe, you know, could hardly ever even remember the time this man was in his right mind. But isn't it sad? It says, that, well, wow, what happened to you? Tell us what happened. Why wow, is so fantastic? I can't believe I can carry a conversation on you. You're not fixing to kill me. Wow, he looks so different. But it was, Jesus, leave us alone. Get out of here. We, we, we don't want you. We just lost 2,000 hogs because of you. What you did to this man. Isn't it strange how the world can see something good as awful? What a tragedy. And again, it shows the worth of a human over that of an animal. And it's sad in this day and time that so many people worship animals and put animals before people. Notice he had the mind of his master. He had the mind, if you please, of Jesus. His mind had been so changed. He was no longer under the influence of Satan. But under the influence of Jesus. And, and folks, every one of us can benefit by being under the influence of Jesus. Letting Him take over in our lives, take care of our weaknesses, and help us to be what we can only be when Jesus is influencing us. And let Him become our mastermind, if you please. What a different world this would be. And then my last thought concerning this tonight, concerning being at the feet of Jesus. In John chapter 11, verse 32, as we look, it is a place of comfort. In verse 32, in the stream portions of the verse, when Mary saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. And so the people again, they saw death and how terrible, how awful death was. 
that death had taken Lazarus, the brother, and how different their life would be now without this brother that had been such a part of their life. Lazarus was a close friend of Jesus. And it's amazing how people that have a relationship with Jesus. So many of them just say, well, Jesus is my best friend. And, and that's the way it should be. And, and I, I trust that he is your best friend. And I, I can go and say, yes, uh, Martha, my wife is my best friend in this world. But Jesus is my best friend. And and helps me to be a better best friend to others, if you please. But she said, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And then Jesus gave her a instruction concerning the resurrection. And Jesus made it very clear. Your brother's dead. Show me where you lay him. Folks, Jesus knew where he was laying. But he gave him an opportunity to serve by taking him to that place. And then he asked him to roll away the stone. And again, Jesus could spoke the word in that stone and then blast it to a million uh, particles or whatever. But he let him roll away the stone. And he remember what the sisters and others said, Lord, he's stinking by now. And they were thinking that Jesus is just woke the sin for that last time just to look upon him and say, Lazarus, I'm sorry. I, I didn't make it in time. I'm, I'm sorry. I wasn't here to heal you from that sickness. I, I'm so sorry. And that's what they thought, that he was just going to see that body again and just pay his last respect, so to speak. They had no idea that Jesus was fixing to raise him back to life. Wow. Four days he'd been in that tomb. And he was past Rick Mortis, Rick Mortis, whatever. He was past all those things. And decay had already set in in that part of the world because of the heat. She came to the right place. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, he groaned in the spirit, and he was troubled, and Jesus wept. Wow. At the feet of Jesus, at the feet of Jesus, I can't think of a better place to look up from than at the feet of Jesus. That we can look up into the eyes of Jesus from that position. And know that Jesus wants to help us and he wants to meet every need in our life. And, and folks, let me take a step further that not only does he want to meet every need in our life, he can meet every need in our life. If we'll just go to him. Humble ourselves. Fall at his feet. Ask him for forgiveness of our sins. Ask him to help us to trust him by faith. Help us to, to not look at ourselves, but to look at him. That truly is the master of life. He's the master of every situation. Just trust him. He wants to do something for you and for me. He wants people to see his greatness. And really, we are his best billboards. We're the ones that, that, that can say more to the rest of the world than anyone else when we let him work through us. And so many times we look at them and go, oh, why is this problem coming to my life? Why am I having this trouble? I've been trying to do right. I've been doing this and that. And look what's happening. I, I just don't understand. And Jesus said, wait a minute. I'm, I'm right here. Hey, hey, hey. You know, don't look at that problem. Look at me. And Jesus allowed it to happen so that he could show his greatness. As we say, Lord, I can't handle this, but I know it's nothing for you to take care of. So, Lord, no matter what happens, I'm just going to trust you and let you take care of it. And then just yield it to him. Say, Lord, I surrender all, all to you again. And as we do that, then people can say, wow, you had this problem the other day. Uh, but you don't seem to have uh, any trouble with it. You don't seem to be disturbed. But didn't you say you had cancer? Didn't you say you had this or that or what? How come you're not bothered by it? And we can honestly say because Jesus is in charge if I have cancer and die, I'm just going to see Jesus that much sooner. So I don't need to fear. Death to me is the beginning of eternal life. And, and again, I, I was saved eternally when I got saved, but I mean, it's the beginning of a, of a totally new life. And I step out of this life into the presence of the Lord. So I shall be troubled for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Philippians 121. So again, uh, what a shame. That we don't look at money and go, wow, God has done this for a reason. And it's not because he's upset with me. And uh, maybe times that maybe we've done something we shouldn't have done. And God just tries to get attention so we can get to him and get things right. But many times things happen so that God can show his glory. And that's basically what Jesus said. He said, your brothers died so I can show the power of God. So I can show the glory of God. 
Uh, I mean, for Jesus to go a hill, that was one night. But for Jesus to raise him back to life after being dead for four days, that was a totally different new story. Wow, amazing. No doubt as they rolled that stone away, the people, whoa, whoa, what are we going to do? I wasn't expecting this. And as they perhaps covered their faces, and then all of a sudden, Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus comes forth. And I, I, I can't imagine how fast maybe all those odors changed because Jesus had entered into the picture. And folks, he can do it for every one of us. No matter how big of a stink you might find yourself in, Jesus is, uh, I don't mean it in a crude way, he's the, the old reader. He's the one that can take care of any problem that we might have and make everything look and smell better and feel better as he comes into our situation. So whatever, we need to make sure that we have things right with God. Lord, thank you again for this time we can come and study your word and help us to see the importance of meeting you at your feet. Help us to look to you for strength and for encouragement. Help us to look to you for healing. Help us to look to you for uh, taking care of maybe financial difficulties or misunderstandings. Help us to realize how much that you want to intervene in our behalf so, so that you can show your greatness. Forgive us, Lord, for the many times that we failed you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. I trust that there's something that you need to take care of. We've got an altar open right now. And uh, you're welcome to come forward at this time. Uh, please fall at the feet of Jesus. And uh, this altar is a place that we find ourselves at the feet of Jesus. And let Him do for us what only He can do. I'll say it so many times we get distracted. It's just a simple mind. Falling before Jesus and say, Dear Lord, I need your help. Forgive me. Let me listen. Help me in this situation and point others to you. Amen. Okay, God bless you. And I trust that y'all have a great week. And uh, we'll let you get on your way home so that you don't get snowed on or whatever. Okay. And, uh, Sean, I don't know. I guess we'll post it up. Uh, I can really say that Sean's had more snow jobs than anybody else I've ever known. But anyhow, uh, one of those things. We used to talk about that text about snow job, and it's about as conning. I don't know if y'all have that meaning for it here or not. But anyhow, we're uh, thankful that Sean is able to do something about the problem out there. So, okay, and we look forward to seeing y'all Wednesday night. Okay, have a great week. Remember to pray for each other.